Hey everyone and welcome to Blue Moon Rentals. This is a 2018 Thor Freedom Elite. Uh, it's a Freedom Elite 30 FE and that basically means it is 30 foot long on the cab portion uh, plus the initial fr uh, front portion of the, F, uh, the E450 cab of the Ford. First, when you get to camp, we want to talk about actually setting up the RV. The best thing to do to set up the RV is inside the RV attached to the microwave is where you're going to find a magnetic level. Uh, for purposes of the video, I've gone ahead and already made the RV level, but in the very back storage cabinet is where you will find leveling blocks. You have a couple of different sizes and they are stackable, interlockable, just like building Legos as a kid. So as you can see, we have uh, what you do is you actually set them up directly behind the tire once you get the RV where you want the placement of it at your campsite and then you are going to back up onto them and you can put one down, stack them two high, three high, all depending on what you need to do to level the RV. The key here is leveling it front to back and leveling it side to side. The side to side is typically more important but it's all important to try to be as level as possible. It helps with the refrigerator and it also helps maintain the integrity of the slides coming in and out of the RV. The next part of the RV setup is the electrical connection. The RV has a 30 amp connection which is going to be found at most of the campsites that you have uh, rented for your trip. Uh, the RV also uh, can take up to 50 amps, but we only recommend that you plug it into a 30 amp. In order to do that, you're going to access this cabinet here. This is where we keep not only the electrical, but we also keep the water hose. So for ease of the video, I've got all the cabinets already unlocked, but you have your electrical, uh, your electrical connection right here. And you have the 30 amp plug that plugs in, and you're actually going to plug that into the surge protector. But in order to actually do that, first you got to feed the electrical unit through the little compartment hole that's at the back of the storage compartment here. So you'll undo that, you'll feed that through, and you'll just grab underneath. You're then actually going to plug that in. Uh, that's going to then get plugged into our surge protector here. The surge protector is important because that lets us know just to help keep the RV's in electrical integrity intact. Uh, because sometimes the campsites can have type electrical surges. So the best thing to do is actually plug this directly in to the campsite. And then once that's plugged in, you can check that the colors are on, that you've got the power coming into the unit, uh, the surge protector, and then you're going to just take your electrical connection and you're going to plug it in. In order to continue demonstrating it here, from here, we can actually reduce that down to a 110 volt standard house plug uh, for ease of having power while here at home because I don't have a 30 amp connection. And then I'm just going to go ahead and plug that in as part of that process here. We now have power to the RV for 110 volt versus the 30 amp. And then pulling that wire out through the side there allows you to close that cabinet up, keep everything in there uh, nice and watertight during the rest of your trip. So the next thing we're going to talk about is going to be the water part of the RV. We have the fresh water fill and we also have city water. So you have two types of water connections. You're only going to be using one of them pretty much for the most time of your trip. And we're going to talk first about the city water connection. So in that same cabinet where we found that electrical wire, you're going to also have that city water hose. So that city water hose is going to be made up of, it's about a 25 foot hose in the storage compartment behind us. You're also going to have an additional 25 foot hose should you need it. On the water hose, you have a water filtration system. You also have a water pressure regulator. Part of the reason for having the pressure regulator is a lot of the campsites are overrun by water pressure and this helps keep the plastic PVC parts inside the RV at the right pressure um, during the, the process here of water. So all you're going to do is you're going to unhook your, the water hose here. We're going to go ahead and come to the back of the unit here where the city water connection is and you are literally going to connect it. It says city water right there. All that's going to do is get connected right there. And just like connecting your garden hose, you're going to go ahead and tighten that up and get a watertight seal uh, on the RV. The other end of the hose is going to connect to the water fill at your campsite. Moving on from the city water, you have your fresh water fill. This is directly above the city water. All you're going to do is remove that black cap 
and you're going to fill that tank. That tank holds about 40 gallons and you can utilize the same hose that you would use for the city water in order to fill that fresh water tank. One of the next couple things that we want to talk about is first we want to actually also cover the low point drain here. This low point drain is just on that fresh water fill. All it is is it's just a turn valve uh, and that's just to drain that fresh water should you need to drain it for any reason. Nothing too crazy important on that, but we'll just always make sure that that's closed during your trip or else you will drain that fresh water tank. The next thing directly next to that is a compartment. Inside this compartment here, this is where some of the fun gross stuff happens. So this is actually a sewer connection. So within the sewer connection here is you have two different valves. You have a black valve and you have a gray valve and they mean exactly what they mean. So on an RV, you have a black water tank and a gray water tank. Your black water tank and gray water tank are both 30 gallons each uh, of holding power. Your black water is going to be anything that comes directly from the toilet and the toilet only. The gray water holding tank is going to be the rest of your drains. So the bathroom sink, the bathroom shower, and the kitchen sink water. That's just going to be your soapy water. So in order to actually connect the hose here, your campsite might have a sewer at the campsite. If not, you do have to take it to the dump station and dump the tanks when you're uh, completed with your trip before returning it. And you're actually going to get that hose from the back of the bumper here. You pull this four by four inch square off and then you pull the hose out. The hose is an accordion style hose and can be used uh, in a variety of manners to connect it to the water hose, to the, the drain. So you'll connect the clear part here is actually going to go in the ground and that's going to go to your drain. You're going to remove this black cap here and you're going to connect the sewer hose to that cap. Once that's connected, you are able to then pull the valves. My recommendation is to pull the gray valve first with just a little bit to make sure you have a sealed up connection here. Close the gray valve and then open the black valve. And you open those strictly just by pulling them. And then you'll start hearing the water flow out of the tank. You then, to close it and stop the water flow, you just push it back in. My recommendation again, pull that black one first. You're gonna drain all that toilet water and then it's great to pull that gray tank and then that helps flush anything excess that may be left in the hose afterwards. While you're at the campsite, you can actually leave the drain valves closed until you have to drain. Whenever my family goes camping, we actually just go out there and drain it every morning. Uh, just based on the, the volume of usage. Uh, having six kids in a camper, you can go through a lot of water really fast. So my recommendation is just to not leave the valves open because you don't want the sediment getting stuck to the bottom of the black tank for any reason. So I always especially keep that black valve closed until I actually have to drain that tank. In order to put it away, you just do all that in reverse. You just disconnect the hose. You put your cap back on. After you've made sure all the water is drained out of your hose, you then slide your hose back in to the bumper. Pretty easily. Said it's just an accordion. A little bit of water in here. And then you put your cap back on and you're all set to go and you're able to close and latch the cabinet. On the back of the RV is our largest storage cabinet and compartment. Inside the storage compartment, this is where you're going to find some wheel chocks in here. You're also going to find the leveling blocks in here. You have a couple of different sewer connection uh, hose fittings here for the sewer uh, drain piping. You also have what's called a catwalk in here. This is for that sewer drain hose. You can lay that upon it to help the water drain. Obviously it needs, you know, kind of a downhill slope there. Also in here, we provide you a few different pairs of gloves for that sewer connection. And then a miscellaneous toolbox kit. It's just got a couple screwdrivers, some miscellaneous fuses, different things that you might need uh, while you're out camping uh, if something's to go wrong in the RV. We also supply a, uh, a raincoat and I only say the raincoat because 
Every time my wife and I have gone camping and we go to leave and tear down camp, it's always raining on us. So we supply a raincoat just for your guys' needs. Inside the unit, we also have a set of jumper cables in here. The jumper cables are, you know, just for in case of an emergency since you've got them there. Hard to see, but you've also got down here, you've got a broom and a Swiffer. This cabinet is also accessible from inside the unit uh, underneath the master bedroom. One thing I want to make mention of is your fuel. The unit uh, is a unleaded unit. It is not a diesel. So it is unleaded fuel only. E87 is what you're going to be putting in there. And uh, you know, just like putting it in your vehicle, the biggest thing to keep in mind when you're getting gas at one of these gas stations is try to use an outside pump uh, because you need to make some wide turns getting in there and you don't want to take out one of those cement bollards uh, that may show up at the gas pump. Okay, you want to be cognizant of that. Also on the outside of the unit, we have a city uh, cable connection, right? So some campsites have cable TV. You're camping, I don't know why you'd be wanting to watch TV anyway, but everybody likes to have their pro sports on on a Sunday when you're out at the campsite for whatever reason. But there's a cable connection there. And in that back storage compartment is a cable connector. There's also an extra cable connector inside. Uh, and inside the unit, there is one button you have to press to switch it from over the air TV channels uh, to the cable TV to make sure that this is on and active. So the RV has uh, propane on board. It's got a 40 gallon propane tank and that is gonna be found inside this cabinet back here. On the unit itself, you have a gauge. You also have an electronic gauge inside that lets you know how much propane you currently have. In the summer months, you're gonna hardly use any propane. If you're taking the RV in the winter and you're using it to run the heat, you're gonna use a lot of propane just to keep that RV warm. So the RV's propane is used in a couple of different areas. It's used on the gas stove. It's also used to run the heat. And then there's an external barbecue connection should you want to bring your own barbecue and have a connection for it on the outside of the RV. Once you have your campsite set up, you can feel comfortable to open the propane up whenever you would like. The propane also has one final option, and that is actually to do fridge cooling while you are driving. Uh, but I don't recommend typically leaving the propane open while driving, and I can explain that a little bit further when we talk about the refrigerator. It's just like opening a propane valve for your barbecue. You just turn the valve to the left and you're gonna now have propane throughout your unit during your trip. The next final cabinet on this side of the unit is gonna be our generator cabinet. This is not one you're typically gonna to have to access while you're in the RV. All you're gonna do is start it from the inside of the unit, but I just wanted to make sure you guys can see it from the outside here. But it has an onboard own on 4000 generator this generator will power the air conditioning, the refrigerator, and all the 110 volt inside the unit. Sometimes in the summertime while you're driving, you do have to run the generator. The generator will run the air conditioning on the back of the unit while you're driving, but the cab of the unit will run just based off the engine, just like your normal car. But if you're traveling with a lot of people, sometimes it's also uh, to help them keep comfortable. There's no additional fuel needed for the generator. It draws directly off of regular unleaded. It draws off of the main fuel tank for the RV uh, itself. The one thing to keep in mind is the generator will not run if there's less than a quarter tank of fuel in the main tank. That's for safety reasons to ensure that you don't accidentally run the generator out of gas while you're at your campsite and then you can't actually move the RV. On the passenger side of the unit, you're gonna find several storage compartments. We'll start with the first two here. The first compartment here is actually an external TV. This TV is on a wall mount swivel, so you can actually pull it out and maneuver it around uh, for what you would like to do from a positioning standpoint. And the cabinet directly underneath this unit is actually another storage compartment here where you'll find a camp mat, three camping chairs that we provide, and then just some LED external lighting that you can use to plug in to drape across the camp mat for you. The TV also works off of the DVD player inside. You just gotta bring that out here and you can plug that in and plug the HDMI port into it to watch a movie outside if you would like. Again, the, uh, the TV works as long as you have 110 volt power uh, to the unit. The rest of the passenger side of the unit is all about storage. It's incredible how much storage you can actually 
find on the RV to utilize. So every one of these cabinets is strictly a storage cabinet. This one's of course not unlocked. This cabinet here I find was great for putting cases, a couple cases of water in there or a couple cases of soda depending on what you beverage of choice is for your trip. On the back side of the unit here, again, you've got more storage compartments here. This one actually goes in further up to the behind the wheel well there. Another storage compartment here. And then you have an elongated storage compartment right here. And uh, this one, if you've got kids, I found was great for their foldable scooters to sit in just because they fit really well in there and I was able to shove all their helmets and things of that nature. Um, but we've had people use it for small suitcases, duffel bags, really whatever you want to put on the outside. We also shove all of our kids swimwear and, and beach towels on the outside of the unit as well. But again, it's just all purely storage compartments throughout the rest of the side of the unit for your use during your trip. On the outside of the unit, you also have 210 volt plugs. When I talked about those lights that you can drape on the ground, uh, this is a great spot to plug those in. Uh, or if you need a spot to plug and charge your phone in on the outside. My wife and I are also famous for setting up an outside table out here and we've used that, brought our instant pot to cook some things outside of the unit. So you can use these outlets for pretty much anything that you feel you need purpose for. So let's go ahead and go inside. So we'll open the unit up. The unit's got a main door here and then the unit's got a screen door with a slide thing that way you can keep the bugs out while that screen is closed for you. That screen door just self attaches to the main door there. Directly inside the unit, when you come inside here, you're gonna have the stairs. Underneath this first, the main set of stairs here is just gonna be your main house batteries for the unit. These batteries are what run all the 12 volt uh, in the unit and these batteries will charge one while you're driving and while the unit is actually plugged in at your campsite because the lights are all required to run off of the 12 volt power. They don't run off of 110 volt. On the inside panel here, there's gonna be a few different switches. You're gonna have your awning control switch, which is gonna be for the awning that's up here. You're gonna have a main power switch, and then you're also going to have a external light switch. And so if I flip that, uh, you've got an external LED light here that runs across the top of the unit. And then you also have a step light switch, which lights up right here on the side of the steps. And the final switch that's there is actually your main power switch. It's got a red light next to it. That red light has to be on pretty much the entire time that you're driving and the entire time that you want to have any type of power in the back of the unit. If that red light is not on, you have a power loss somewhere. That red light will be on the entire time the unit is plugged into power, uh, but if you are not plugged into power, sometimes it is not on, and you just have to flip that switch one time, and that's going to go ahead and flip that red light on. That red light also means you have power to the main radio on the dash. On the outside of the unit, you also have our awning. The awning is as simple as that. You push the switch inside here. That awning is going to go ahead and open all the way up. Takes a little bit, but once it's open, there's not a whole lot you actually have to do. There's, uh, it's got the tension all preset for you and ready to go. However, if you do leave the campsite during the day, my suggestion is to bring the awning in. The awning is one of the only things that is not covered by the RV, uh, by the RV insurance. And so when the awning is all the way out, you can also pull down a little bit on it to drain any water off the top. And you can do that on either side. So just with, by pulling it down just ever so slightly, that way you can run any of the water that may be on the top off of there. So now that we come inside the unit, you're gonna have what I call the brain of the RV, Central Command Center. Central Command gives you all of the coverage that you need for everything on the unit. It talks about the propane, it talks about the battery, fresh water tank, black water tank, and gray water tank. And by clicking any one of those buttons, it's gonna give you the current percentage of how full things are at, so you can see the battery level's full. But our propane is about two thirds, your fresh water tank is empty, your black tank is empty, and your gray tank. It's also how you're actually going to open up the RV with our slide extend buttons here. So now that we've gone ahead and leveled out the unit, 
the biggest thing we're going to do is we're going to bring out the slides to get us some more room in here. So on that central command center, you see slide one and slide two. You're going to go ahead and hit the retract buttons, and you can actually do this simultaneously, or you can do them separately. I always do them together just to make my life a little bit easier and a little bit faster. The thing to keep in mind is you're going to hold those buttons down until those slides are all the way out. So here we have Central Command. We've kind of already talked about it a little bit, but I want to show everyone how we actually start the generator. So in order to start the generator, the generator's got an hour meter on it, and you hold down the stop button. Just like on your lawnmower when you have to prime it, you hold down that stop button. Uh, so like you'd be pumping it, you let that red light come on, hold that for about five seconds here. And once that's been held a little bit, let go, and then just push that start button until that thing starts up. It may not start on the very first try, which is probably what we're gonna face right here because it's a little cool out this morning. You'll just let that go. You'll hold down that stop button one more time here. Let that thing get primed up again with a little bit more fuel in the line. And then hit that start button again and that thing should fire right up. Once it fires up, it's gonna give you our current hours uh, meter on there for you. We'll let that warm up for a minute, and while that's warming up, we'll cover a couple other things here. Again, you've got slide one, extend and retract. If for whatever reason, if you go to hit the uh, retract button and it doesn't start moving in, just release it and hit it one more time. You also have your water pump. That is strictly for the fresh water fill tank. That is only if you are driving and other things of that nature. You do not use it if you're on city water connection. That's just going to give you standard city water pressure. So you just flip that up. That red light's going to come on and that's going to keep the water primed in those uh, in the lines for you. My recommendation is if you are using fresh water for whatever reason, don't just leave that pump on if you're not in the camper because you don't want the line to be over pressurized for any reason during the day. Should you need any warm water for any reason, you have propane fuel and you have 110 volt. The 110 volt does not actually work in the unit, so we're only gonna focus on the propane. All you're gonna do is you're gonna flip that propane gas on. That's gonna go ahead and heat that water up. You wanna make sure you have water pressure going on because you wanna make sure that hot water tank, it's a six gallon tank, is full of water. That six gallons is gonna get you for a, a quick shower, maybe two showers, but the water only takes about five to 10 minutes to heat up on the propane. So once you flip that on, give it about 10 minutes, you're gonna have warm water. That warm water actually stays pretty warm because that water heater tank is pretty heavily insulated. Underneath this, you're gonna have your standard household thermostat. Um, maybe your household thermostat from the 90s, uh, but it's just got your, your dial to turn the temperature to whatever you want it to. You can have it on heat or cool, simply by flipping that switch or whatever you need there, put that temperature all the way down. That's gonna go ahead and then cause that air conditioning unit to kick on and start blowing. The air conditioning all blows from vents on the top of the unit. The heat blows from all vents below the unit. Um, you coming out, there's vents coming out of the couch, back side of the beds here and things of that nature. Again, it's the same thing. All you're gonna do is you're gonna flip that over to heat. You're gonna put that temperature to what you want it to. Um, and again, it's just all in an auto setting right now on the fan. However, sometimes you just want some air circulating, feel free to kick the fan on to low or high uh, in the on mode uh, and kick the unit to fan. And again, this here is just a physical light switch. Now to shut the generator off, now that the generator's warmed up, the generator should run for you know, as long as you need it to on your trip. The generator does need to be a little bit level. The generator has a few key things that it will not run for, such as low on oil, uh, maybe not getting enough cooling to it can overheat, but typically you should be good to go during the, the duration of your trip. We do service the generator often, but to shut it off, you just hold down that stop button until that shuts off entirely. And once it shuts off, you are all set. So in the unit, you have several different beds. We're gonna go ahead and talk about the two twin beds that we have in the unit. And each of these beds has their own individual TV. The remote is kept in the master bedroom. And again, it's pretty simple. 
it's a TV, you power it on, you can power both of them on, and you can turn those on. These TVs are also each individually equip equipped with their own DVD player, and you can simply pull, uh, pull them off the wall a little bit to slide the DVD in. I believe this top one is actually affixed. I believe the bottom one actually has a little bit more swinging ability on it. This bed right here on the bottom one can also be converted to a dinette, and so it can be a secondary table should you need it. And in order to do that, you flip up the pillow casings here. These then get shoved in the corners. There is a stick for this bed in particular that goes in the bottom here and gets connected there. And in order to get that, you actually usually get that from the back under uh, back here keep it in one of these storage compartments here, or sometimes we keep it under the bed, just all depending on what you need while you're traveling. The rubber foot is gonna go inside the top there. It's actually easier if you go ahead and just set it in the bottom first though here. So that goes down in there. Get, get the, uh, and then twists and locks. And then you can set that top on. And you now have an extra table for right here for the kids to sit in. This table can be set up while the top bunk is down as well. The top bunk comes down here. You've got a pull lever there. You've got another pull lever on this side. And then that comes down and you have a nice bed up here. You've got a couple of ladders. This is where we store the ladders for the trip. One ladder is going to be used for with the queen bed on the front of the unit. The other ladder is easily to be set up right here for the kids and a little bit of safety climbing up there. The bed, all of this can get put away exactly how I just set it up in reverse. The lights that are right here above this bed are individual reading lights for your kid or whoever's sleeping up here. And they just have their own individual small push button uh, on the light to turn the light on and off. And that covers the two twin beds in the unit and the extra dinette. So welcome to the master bedroom. The master bedroom is typically gonna be easily set up as soon as you open the slides. And the master bedroom is full of storage. Every one of these compartments up here is empty for your utilization and, uh, and packing of your, your goods. And each one of these opens and closes. Also in the back here, uh, underneath the bed, it's pretty uh, important to think about. There's a couple things underneath the bed. If you remember earlier, we talked about the large storage compartment on the outside of the unit has access inside the unit, and that's actually where that happens. The bed mattress is pretty easily foldable. That lifts up, and you have a stor the storage compartment access here, and that's where you can access those brooms and other material uh, that you need from the inside. This is also a great storage compartment if you want to toss a suitcase or something like that inside of here. Directly behind me in the uh, front of the bed here is more storage. There is no TV in the master bedroom, um, so you've got extra cabinets back here. My wife and I use this one as a pantry uh, back here while we were traveling. Put the extra fruit and vegetables back here that can uh, shelf stable. And then again, just a myriad of drawers and other things. And now each one of these drawers, when you close them, you want to make sure that you actually close them, push them, and lock them in place. That way they're not swinging back and forth while driving. You have a wardrobe cabinet uh, inside here so you can hang some of your clothes up. And then the next storage compartment that is directly underneath the bed is actually a compartment you shouldn't have to get in. But I like to show it anyway because it covers all the electrical, it's got the fresh water storage tank and the water pump and all the things that are in here. And right now, um, you know, the tank is obviously empty, but this is where you can also see how full the fresh water tank is should you need it. Uh, it's got the water pump and, and other material in here. Again, you should not have to access this tank uh, or storage compartment for any reason, but just like to make sure I show it because directly next to it is also just like in your house, you have an electrical cabinet. This opens up down here and you have several different fuse panels just like at your house. And then you have the replaceable fuses in there. If you remember earlier, I talked about inside the storage compartment, we have a toolbox with you know, miscellaneous fuses. Therefore right here, just in case something happens to pop on you while you're on your trip, it's 
we haven't necessarily had anything happen on a trip yet, but we like to make sure that you, we have a little bit of our bases covered for you. Also in the back of the unit, you're gonna have a couple of electrical outlets, to be one on the back side of the other side of the bed as well. Plug it in your phone to be able to charge it up. And then we have a secondary radio in the back of the unit here uh, that you can Bluetooth your phone to and make any type of connection you would like and play music throughout the speakers uh, in the unit here. The bathroom is probably pretty important, right? This is where uh, you know, you're able to get clean, brush your teeth and things of that nature. So inside the bathroom here is also a spot that I store the trash can. So inside the shower area here, pretty hard to see, but we keep a trash can here. This trash can actually, we come out here, we set that trash can up uh, pretty much right there uh, for us during the duration of our trip. But inside the bathroom, you have your shower with uh, a shower curtain, then you have your toilet and you have your sink. The toilet, a lot of people wonder, well, how do I flush the toilet? Where's the flush? There's no flush. It's actually a foot pedal. So what you do is you just put your foot in there. When you're flushing it, make sure you have water pressure and you just push down on that lever right there. Again, it's a standard bathroom. You've got a couple of cabinets uh, in here uh, for storage, putting your towels and, and linens and things of that nature inside the cabinets. The other thing is, this, you have to utilize RV safe toilet paper, and we provide typically four to six rolls for your trip. Should you need more, it's usually just a Scott's single ply uh, paper. You can be purchased at any of your local campgrounds that you're gonna be at, as well as uh, Walmart or any of the big box retailers. So on the refrigerator, a couple things that we wanna make sure we talk about here. So the refrigerator stays cool for about seven to 10 hours of your drive, depending on how full you've got it packed. Sometimes it's also good to put some frozen water bottles inside the fridge to help keep it cool like a cooler. The fridge has a, is a three-way fridge. Um, I'm sorry, it's a two-way fridge, not a three-way fridge. A two-way fridge that runs off of propane and 110 volt power. In order to get it to work, you have a little switch here that's called on or it's auto. And you usually put the switch into the auto mode uh, if you're running the fridge off of propane and the propane valve is not open for whatever reason, you need to open the propane valve, flip the switch back to the off mode, give it about five seconds, and then flip that switch back to auto. That's gonna go ahead and then fire it up on that propane. That's if you're not plugged into 110 volt power or you, you know, plugged into that 30 amp at your campsite. The refrigerator's pretty spacious. You can fit you know, a gallon of milk in there, a couple other things in there, bottles of water. Uh, other beverages of your choice, and then we pr provide a couple empty ice trays for you. Also, prior to you coming to pick it up, I always plug this in the day before and make sure the fridge is cool for you right before your trip. That way you can just load it and you can get going on the road pretty quick. Moving over from the refrigerator, we kind of enter into your small kitchen space. So the kitchen has a little bit of an extended countertop here that you can lift up and it just locks itself right into place by lifting it up trash can fits nicely underneath. You have your stove top here. You can flip this around here and then lift it all the way up. If you look back here, we have a magnet here that just connects here to this little thing, a uh, little bolt on the back of the top and just push that back into place there. I do, have, I do have the propane on right now. And so you can actually turn that on and then just twist the, uh, twist your little spark here to to light the, uh, the stove up for you. We supply a coffee maker uh, during your trip. There is some coffee filters in the cabinet and in the drawer down here below. And then you've got some pa a paper towel rack for your needs, but then kind of moving over here, you have just your standard kitchen sink, nothing special about it. You got, you know, Hot, as long as you need hot water, flip that propane uh, valve, or not propane valve, but flip the uh, hot water switch on the control board and you've got hot water again coming through there. We supply inside the cabinet up here. We've got some standard utensils, pots and pans, a little baking pan for your needs and a toaster. That all can be utilized for your trip. We just ask that you make sure you return it clean and in the same condition that you received it in. And if you need power right over here, this pops up here, it gives you three plugs and two USB ports, uh, great for charging your phone as well during your trip. 
And then throughout the cabinets, uh, we have a couple of just standard bowls and plates for your needs, just some leftover forks and you know throwaway items, but that's all in there for you. And then we also provide uh, you know a couple miscellaneous uh, trash bags, some Ziploc bags, some more utensil things that you need for your trip, as well as a couple of dish towels. And then underneath, you've got a little dishwashing bucket, as well as some dish detergent and some other things that are in there for your needs during your trip. So now we're kind of in the dinette area and couch area. A couple things to consider when you're thinking about here is these are also both beds. And so you can sit right here at this table just as to eat your breakfast, eat your lunch, whatever you want to do. But this table also converts to a bed. And I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate that real quick on how that happens. And so simply, we can move my little binder there. Underneath here, there is a little lever. It's hard to see, but you just flip that lever off to the side and then you simply push the bed down. We can go ahead and move these pillows out of the way here. You're gonna to wanna to pull, similar to the dinette in the back, you'll just pull these two cushions out. You can slide the chair cushions, you slide those back a little bit here. That way you can get the uh, table down all the way here. So we'll go ahead and get that table moved all the way down into place. And then you can put those cushions back and you've got yourself basically kind of a, a little bit of a deluxe deluxe bed in here. And you can just put a sheet over it, bring some pillows, and you're good to go on that. Setting the dinette back up is exactly what I just did, but in reverse. Now on the opposite side, you have your couch. Your couch is for obviously sitting, got a couple cup holders there. You can maneuver the pillows out of the way for right now. But in order to set up the couch and convert that to a bed, you pull up the armrests on both sides here. It's got two little uh, holding slots that the, they fit in on the sides there. And then just like any type of sleeper sofa, that's gonna go ahead and pull right out and fold down. And then you can actually put your pillow things, you know, kind of back and tuck them down there so that they're out of the way. The one thing to also keep in mind about the couch and the dinette that convert to the beds is this is also where you have additional seat belts. Um, you are able to strap in car seats on the couch. You're able to strap car seats in on the dinette. You have two seat belts, additional seat belts here on the dinette and two additional seat belts here uh, on the couch. I believe there actually might be a third. I'd have to double check, but again, you can just put the couch back and you're good to go. I have more TVs in this RV than I do in my entire house, which is kind of crazy to think about. But you have another queen bed up here. You can put, you know, a couple of adults up there. This does have a 500 pound weight limit uh, overall. So you don't want to put two uh, probably grown males, probably two of me up there. I don't want two of myself up there to, to break it. Um, the kids love it up here. But this is also where that other ladder comes into play that we saw earlier. That ladder can go, goes right here and can be used to get an access to up there. My preference is try not to have the kids jump and step on the back of the, uh, dinette here or on the table it can easily be broken based on a little bit of weight unfortunately up here uh, if you want a little bit more driving comfort while you're driving you can lift this up and move that kind of up and out of the way um, so you've got a little bit more open space maybe a little bit less claustrophobic up there but this is where also you have our TV. It's on a swivel so you can either leave it when it's positioned or you can loosen up the swivel at the top there. Make sure you tighten that down before you do any type of driving and that TV is going to go ahead and swivel out here for you guys to be able to utilize and see. This TV is the one that's also connected to the cable on the outside of the unit. Uh, you just simply lift up this cabinet here. You've got your DVD player and the coax is already plugged in and connected to the TV 
but in order to actually make it play TV via the cable versus over the air, to the right of the coax, there is a small little button. It's a little hard to see, but you just push that button. There should be a little green light that lights up, letting you know that you're connected to cable TV versus over the air channels. Should the coax that's outside not be long enough, we do have an, uh, a longer one in here to connect to the RV campsite. So there's a couple things throughout the unit, a couple of exterior air vents, and they're very simple to open. All you gotta do is twist the knob and open those air vents all the way up. There's going to be four of them throughout the unit. There's one in the master bedroom. There's one above the queen bed above the cab, the one that we just demonstrated and talked about right here. And there's also one in the bathroom. There's one other thing that opens and closes on the roof, and that is the over the air TV antenna. And that's done right here by simply pushing this button up and twisting that all the way until it opens and then drop and then closing that back down. Now you don't wanna travel with that up. So anytime before you start driving the RV, you wanna lift that up and make sure that that thing is brought all the way back down into the closed position. So prior to bringing in the slides in the storage compartment, we have this slide lubricant and we also keep one up where the DVD player is as well for you. All we do is ask anytime before you bring the slides in, you just spray a little bit of this on the uh, metal portion of the sides here. And I'm gonna show that real quick here. So you just take it and just hit that track on the top and the bottom here. And you're gonna do that on both sides of the unit prior to bringing those slides in. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is when you're getting ready to close up your campsite, you're gonna notice that everything we've talked about, you're just gonna do in reverse. The one thing I wanna make sure I mention is before you bring in the kitchen slide, is that you take this driver's side seat here and you pull it all the way forward. I've already done that for ease of purposes of the video, but making sure that that's in the forward position, that way when the slide closes, it doesn't run into the side arm of the seat here. So we're gonna go ahead and show you how to close the slides now. And as we do that, we go back to central command and we go ahead and push in that retract button right there and we hold it down until that slide comes all the way in. And you'll know it's all the way in once the motors have stopped uh, whining. So inside the cab of the unit here, this is the drivable section here. The mirrors on this unit, unfortunately, are not an electric mirror, so you wanna make sure someone's there to help you get those adjusted before you start driving the unit. But the one thing that I really wanna mention is about the radio here. So this radio will only work uh, if you are have that red light on that I talked about a while back, but that red light needs to be on on the main power unit uh, for the house batteries in order for this radio to run. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the radio on real quick here. And once this radio turns on, you're gonna notice it doesn't have any of the stations program because it's always losing the uh, always losing the stations because when I kill the main power of it, it's there. The one thing to really keep in mind while you're driving here is you can hit this little home button in the top left here and you can hit rear camera. That's gonna activate that rear camera for you while you're driving, kind of giving you a little bit of an additional look behind you while you are driving. Other than that, everything else here is pretty much the same as driving your normal vehicle around. Over here, you have an HDMI input and a USB charger uh, that you can plug in for utilizing your phone. Uh, the HDMI allows you to mirror your navigation up to the screen so you can uh, make it a little bit easier and safer while you drive. So one thing to make sure you are aware of is before you reach out to us as the owners of the unit, make sure you check into the operations manual. This covers everything that I have gone ahead and talked about from how to connect the wastewater tanks, how to connect the city water connection, how to fresh fill the tank. It's all labeled with a table of contents to make it easier for you to locate directly in the book. And should you have any immediate questions, my cell phone number and my wife Chelsea's cell phone number is directly at the bottom. Feel free to shoot us a text uh, or give us a call if there is an emergency situation. We're happy to try to help and accommodate as much as we can.